Hi! This is the Tropical Sourdough. In this video, isi-share ko sa inyo ang mga norms sa paggawa ng sourdough starter na hindi actually applicable sa mga nakatira sa mga maiinit na bansa kagaya ng Pilipinas. We will break the norms, ika nga. And hopefully, you'll be able to have a deeper understanding of the behavior of your starter so that you'll know how to easily maintain it. Manood po tayo hanggang dulo para sa mga karagdagang tips about the sourdough starter. The first norm that we will break is that you need a digital food scale. Actually, ang kailangan mo lang ay isang kutsara. You don't even need a measuring spoon. I have made two starters already and both are very active. I used a measuring spoon sa unang starter while I used an ordinary spoon sa second starter. The second norm that we will break is that you need to start with a lot of flour, as in like 50 grams and pataas. You can start with as low as 10 grams or isang tablespoon of flour. When I made my first starter, I just used 3 tablespoons of flour. Pero sa second starter ko, I literally just used 1 heaping tablespoon of flour using an ordinary spoon pa ha? The third norm we will break is that you need to discard half or more of the starter before you feed it. If you start small, you won't end up with a lot of starter until it gets active. Sa gantong paraan, di mo rin kailangan magtapon ng starter. I highly suggest that you build up your starter using small amounts of flour at each feeding. The fourth norm that we will break is that the starter has to have a 1 to 1 ratio of water to flour. This means that your starter has 100% hydration rate. Since nakatira tayo sa isang mainit na bansa, mas mainam bumuo ng low hydration starter, meaning mas marami ang harina kesa sa tubig. I recommend 2 parts water to 3 parts flour for a 67% hydration rate. Halimbawa, maghahalo ka ng 30 grams flour at 20 grams na tubig. Kung wala kang digital food scale, gumamit ng isang punong kutsara ng harina sa isang kutsara ng tubig. Dati, I used 3 tablespoons ng flour sa isa't kalahating tablespoon ng tubig. All you need to make sure is that ang consistency ng iyong starter ay stiff. Mahirap ito haluin but just be patient. The fifth norm that we will break is that you need a very large container because the starter might crawl out of the container. As you see in the pictures, I only used small containers because I only feed small portions of flour and water at each feeding. Actually, you only need a container that can accommodate 4 times the original height of the starter right after it is fed. Pag sobrang laki o lalim ng container na gagamitin mo, mahihirapan ka rin sa pagdukot ng starter kapag gagamitin mo na siya sa pagbabake. The sixth norm that we will break is that the lid of your starter container should be loosely closed to let air in. You actually need to protect your starter from pests. I failed in my first attempt at a starter because a cockroach got in. Actually, yeasts are facultative anaerobes. Ibig sabihin na magpapatuloy ang respiration ng yeast with or without the presence of oxygen. Kung kaya, okay lang na isara mo ng maigi ang takip ng iyong sourdough container. The seventh norm that we will break is that you need to use whole wheat flour. Totoo din namang active agad ang starter. Kahit second day pa lang gamit ang whole wheat flour. But later, I was able to make sourdough starter using plain bread flour. Naging active rin siya on its second day. But don't get me wrong ha, mas gusto ko pa rin ang whole wheat flour kasi sobrang bango po niya compared sa bread flour. The eighth norm that we will break is that you need to stir the starter in between feedings many times throughout the day. I highly suggest na sa pagsimula ng iyong starter, you feed it two times a day, once in the morning and once sa gabi. Sa pag-feed mo na rin, stir ng maigi ang starter para makita mo yung activity or growth niya in between feedings. Kung ihahalo mo kasi siya lagi in between feedings, mawawala ang mga bubbles nito and hindi mo mapapansin kung tumangkad man ito. Iisipin mo tuloy na hindi active ang starter mo. The ninth norm that we will break is that you can only use your starter after at least a week. To defy this, 
I made sourdough bread using my 4-day-old sourdough starter that's made from plain bread flour. And look at what I was able to make. I was able to make good sourdough bread with decent oven spring, open crumb, and a good ear with just a 4-day-old starter. The last norm that we will break is that the starter has to pass the flow test before you can use it to make sourdough bread. Since I have been recommending low hydration starter, you must know na itong klaseng starter na ito ay hindi laging nagfo-float. And it's okay, it really doesn't matter. Ang talagang tititingnan if pwedeng gamitin ang starter ay kung dumoble na ang kanyang height within 2 to 4 hours after mo siyang i-feed at iiwan at room temperature. And those were 10 norms about the sourdough starter that you can break, especially if you live in a tropical country. Pabor kasi sa klima natin ang paglago ng yeast sa sourdough starter. I hope may natutunan kayo sa video na ito. More tips will be shared soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Tropical Sourdough, wishing you the best in your sourdough bread journey. God bless you!